This is Mary at the Mary Atier, and it is Friday evening, July the 16th. Yeah, let's do some art. Let's do some art. Hi, Mina. Welcome, welcome, Mina. I was in Becky's room Wednesday evening and working on her page assignment, which is summertime, things you enjoy, and I enjoy porch sitting. And I even found an article, I like to sit on the front porch, I found an article about sitting on the front porch in a Mary Jane magazine. So I do have a front porch journal that I'm using this year that's just more of a junk journal. And I tied it together with a necktie. And I haven't done a whole lot of sitting out there this year, but I've done some and I'm starting to fill my journal. Hopefully I'll have it done by the end of the end of the summer at least. But there's always the fall too. I'm going to put this article back inside because I want to keep it in my journal. So this is my 2021 front porch journal. I have another one similar to this but I don't know if I'll get to that. Okay, so here it is. Now I still have the second page to do, and we were talking about it, and what she wanted us to do was to go to a local magazine, uh, like a touristy type magazine, and cut out some little pictures or get inspired by a design in the magazine. And uh, what I did was I, I have... Well, I have two local ones. I didn't find anything that inspired me here. I guess I could have done these banners or maybe the little cutouts here. Uh, this, this is your guide to central Nebraska. And although there are some color pieces, most of it is black and white. And it really didn't inspire me too much. But I also have this county register which is, you get it at our local quilt store. And uh, I found these teeny little sewing machines. They're so cute. And what Becky did on hers, on one of her designs, she did a film strip. And the gals were telling me that I could do uh, a film strip. And that's what I'm going to do. And then we're talking about lightning. And I happen to have painted this tag, which is, a. am doing mine on Dollar Tree double-sided tape product tags. And I think I will use this as the background and just make some lightning strikes in here. And I'll do the, I guess I'll do the film strip first. Draw out the film strip. So I'm going to work on this tonight so I can have it done. And then there's also a little watercolor card that we're putting on each one of the pages. So we've done three weeks in here, I believe. So, um, as I was sorting out again, I found this 2018 planner. And I don't know if I got it in 2018. I might have gotten it. In, well, it's 2017 and 18. And I had started doing some sketches in here. But I thought I'd go to July. And let's see. Today is what? The 16th. And I thought I would start doing a challenge of a, a doodle or sketch a day. So I might start that here. Now this says Monday. I might just blot out the the day and I'll put 2021 up here. And each day I'll try to do a little challenge on here. So we'll we'll do this later tonight too. And we're working on our character in Fibsville. We're creating a character in our Fibsville stories. You guys were saying that you're missing the Fibsville stories. So, we're creating a, a, a character who happens to be a gentleman, a <laughs> gentleman, and uh, after we create him, it's going to be a murder mystery. We're going to, 
we're going to do a murder mystery story in Fibsville. Fibsville is our fictional town. Uh, Fibs stands for Friends in the Box. Well, really kind of got that from Dee Dee Willingham, who I think it was um, Musical Scrapper who coined that phrase, Fibs. And then Janet coined Fibsville for our our group here. So we have a little town, and we've done little Fibsville stories. Let's welcome folks in. Let me go clear to the top here. Hi, Mina. Hi, Sherry Van. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Kilburns. Welcome. Hi, Nancy Widner. So good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Teresa's here. Hi, little sisters, Teresa. Little sister Spitfire. Shelly's Brooksview. Hi, Sherry Van. Sharon Lombard. Sharon. Felticia got a hat pin. I, I got these hat pins at Keisha's auction and so it, it's not in her hat but it, it's it's well I guess I could kind of make it in her hat here but it's she's made out of felt so she can take it let's put these in her hat Sharon Lombard did this art doll isn't this wonderful it's a felted doll such a nice gift Sharon. I sure do appreciate it. Sharon does beautiful felting. This is this is just perfection. This is perfection. And we named her and Becky came up with the name Felticia. And what really I liked that name when I saw it, but I said I was going to put it in random org with, along with all the other suggested names and random org picked it. And I'm going, "Yay!" And then Holly picked Rose. And for the middle name, she's Felticia Rose, and her friend here is Penelope Rose. And I just, I really do like how that turned out. I'm going to lose these scissors if I don't pin them in here. Let's put this in here. And so, but I keep Felticia up off of the desk because I don't want to get her messed up. She sits over here and overlooks our goings on. Candy. Hi Candy. Welcome, welcome. Hi Rhonda. Welcome Rhonda. <laughs> Aw. Hi Becky. Y you know, on my my sketch here is not quite done. There's something missing here. What do you think it is? It's me. So I'm going to come in here, and I think over here I'm going to put me on this chair. I could put me in that chair. <laughs> and I'm not sitting on the front porch, and I, I like to do caricatures of me, little cartoony characters, sort of. So I'm going to do that on here for porch sitting. But like I said, we'll work on that a little bit later. Let's put this... And of course I have the Rolodex cards, and I did see where... Lizzie Brewer is doing butterfly Rolodex cards where she's having the butterflies pop out of the the cards. And she's doing a really nice job of them. They're very, very pretty. So I, I went out and watched her video that she had of that. Becky's here. Rhonda, Sharon, Mina. Hi, Lo Lovely's Crafting Lodge. Jacqueline, I think your name is. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Rachel. Aw, thank you, Rachel. Yeah, I just about canceled tonight. I uh, had to go to the dentist yesterday, and it put me in a foul mood. <laughs> I have not been to a dentist since I came back to Nebraska. And so this dentist was new to me. And I thought I had the right address, and I drove there, and I said, I better check it. And, of course, I Googled it, and I must have hit the wrong link, and it sent me from here over to here. So I went over to here, which was a medical center, and uh, I went up there, and I looked for the room number, and it was dark. <laughs> and so I asked in one of the other offices, no, they're way over here. <laughs> so I had to go way back, and... I don't know. I not too 
not too happy with my dentist visit, but we'll we'll see what happens with that. All right, Ruth is here. Hi, Ruth. Rachel, Nina, Kilburns, Shelley. Hi, Hudson Sailor Nancy. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Janet. There's Janet Baum. Hi, Janet. Janet says it's hot. It's hot in her in her world today. Becky's saying hello to everybody. Rachel, Janet. Janet put in a link to the Bibsfield Facebook group. If you're not a member, consider joining. And if you join, be sure to answer the questions. Janet and Violet. Uh, Violet started the group and Janet helps her administer it. Aw, thank you, Janet. Aw. <laughs> Kendra? Hi, Kendra. Welcome, welcome, Kendra. So good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Leave it in yesterday. Yes. Leave it in yesterday. Okay. So let's open some happy mail. This came from a lady who does not... Uh, she watches, uh, but she watches the replays. And uh, she sent me an email, and she sent me happy mail before. And at first, I wasn't sure I could tell her name, but I'll just call her Judy. Judy P. She knows who she is. And she sent me a box of happy mail, and it's sitting over there. I'm, I can't use all the happy mail all at once, but I do use my happy mail. So, But she sent me some more. So thank you, Judy. I'll have to email her and let her know I got this. Let's open the... Let's see. Can I open it right here without too much damage? Get my scissors in there. Let's see what Judy sent. Oh, oh, look at this. It's a note card, but look. Oh, just kids. Let's see what she says. Hi, Mary, I've been watching you and some of the others. Other ladies, enjoy you all. Didn't hear from you if you needed anything. <laughs> Aw, I kind of giggle at that because I'm going, oh, well, what should I tell her? <laughs> I saw you in your yard. Oh, the yard. Oh, my goodness, the yard. It's been raining here the last couple of days. It was nice today, but we've had some rainy weather. And uh, the lawn will need to be mowed again next week. And, uh, yeah, the... I was out there this morning hoeing corn, ho hoeing the, we, I'm, we're just, I have an eternal fight with, um, Mary, with, uh, Morning Glory in our garden, and I get them while they're little, I get them while they're little, but man, they pop up just like weeds, they're, you know, so, I was out there about an hour today hoeing in the, the cornfield, <laughs> two rows of sweet corn. She says, like your dolls and card making, I'll be watching you. Happy crafting. God bless, Judy. Thank you so much, Judy. Judy P. You know, this, I'm so tempted. This is a note card. I'd like to keep the note card, but I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted to put this on my Rolodex because it really fits. So we'll have to see what happens there. Let's see what else. She sent a bookmark. This is pretty. Very nice. Bookmark with the little, these are almost little uh, knit ties. They're kind of stretchy. That's cute. Some little dominoes. And look at this. Some stencils. Wow. I don't have these either. Look, flamingos. Flamingo. Oh, no. those. Yeah, it's a flamingo and a toucan there. 
little flower and it looks like little either leaves or yeah I think it's leaves Aw, I don't have these and look at all these leaves these are pretty oh there's some more down at the bottom here's I guess this was meant to go between so you can look at it this way and that way and oh look I don't have these I do not have these stencils thank you so much Judy oh wow and then this one looks like pineapples thank you Judy I'll keep these out with my stencils and I'll be using those and what do we have here two from let's open this up some die cuts some die cuts some floral like Tim Holtz floral and some some suitcases these will go good with my travel journal these suitcases which Rosemary is diligently working away on her <laughs> on her July travel journal and I have the caboodle but yeah Mary's Mary's trying to catch up with the world here and some really pretty Ooh, these are these feel like fabric they are fabric cut flo florals oh these are cool I like these very nice very very nice thank you so much Judy and some some uh, there's a teeny one there some playing cards fairly large playing cards these make a nice paper doll let's keep the jack out so thank you so much Judy I'm gonna keep this out too for I think I'm gonna put these on the Rolodex yeah we'll just put it in here and come back to it later and thank you so much for everything Judy and she's not in here tonight but I know she's watching and I'll I will send her a message and tell her I opened her happy mail all right now I have another happy mail and oh look she sent some 4th of July ribbon this will go in my some flag ribbon this will go in my summertime journal on the 4th of July pages oh this is cool thank you Judy I'll keep that out too now I got another piece here and I'm not sure if I think this was a gifty from Keisha's auction I think because I don't remember ordering anything let's open this pretty envelope I ordered from Keisha but I got the order and if this was I'm not sure where I got it, what this is. So this might be a gifty from somebody. I'm not. I'm just not sure. We'll have to see what this is. I don't remember. I might have ordered it and then forgot about it. American art. Oh, it's a gift from Paint Girly. Oh, Lori. Keep Paint Girly in your thoughts. I have just plain water tonight. That dentist depressed me. He told me I'd have to cut out sweets. Of course, every dentist will say that, but he was serious. <laughs> so I'm trying to cut down on my sweets. And then I was reading uh, Dietary Food. And, and I love potato chips. And they say that potato chips is also bad for your teeth. This is pretty. I'll put this in my journal. Make me a nice pocket in my journal. So, I, I don't know, I guess that squirt pop, it's sugary pop, will probably sit out in the, I'm going to see how long I can let, uh, let's see, I probably have about, I just opened a 12 pack. I may have about 9 or 10 cans in there. Let's see if I can make them last all summer. I get thirsty when I mow, but you know what, when you're hot and sweaty, a good old glass of cool water and peach tea 
I, I have peach tea tonight. I love peach tea. Mm, that's good. All right. So this came from Lori. Keep Lori in your thoughts and prayers. She wasn't feeling too good uh, a couple weeks ago. I don't know how she's feeling now. But uh, I'll have to thank her for this American Art Review. Look at this. August of 2013. Thank you, Pink Girly. Oh, bless her heart. Penelope, I'm going to move you. Oh, look at these flowers. You know what? This will make a really nice reverse collage, won't it? Shall we do reverse collage in here? Because there's a lot of pictures. Yep, I think just like I need to start another project, huh? Oh, wow. Of course, I'm going to take a look at it closer probably this weekend. John Whalen Fine Art Circus. This is a circus here. Whoops, am I buffering? My tablet is buffering. I'm live. Wow. My tablet is buffering. I can't see what's going on here. Now, let me, let me see what's going on on my tablet. There. Of course, I got 144p, I think. Yeah. Quality. Advanced. 720. There we go. Alrighty. So, wow. Look at this. Now, if I do reverse collage, I'll, I'll probably have to tear some of the pages out. Oh, boy. And I have something else I want to show you. Well, I, you. Look at this here. Let's just flip to a, a page that... An interesting page here. Look at this page. I'm going to run into the other room for a second and get a magazine. yesterday. Now, this magazine, what this book, this, that paint girl has sent me reminded me of this. Um, I, you can get this, we get this at our local grocery store, and I first saw Barb Owen reviewing this magazine. Let me... And there's an article in here. This is their creativity issue. And so all the articles in this one, this is the, um, well, I guess you can call it an August issue. I don't know if they have. I don't know if they call it by date. They just say display until September. This is a special, Breathe Creativity. But all the articles in here are about creativity. Now there's one in here, and I like to read these articles. Most of their, most of their articles in this Breathe magazine is about wellness, kindness, mindfulness, inspiration. Um, some of it is more philosophy than art, but they always have this wonderful graphic art in each one of their magazines. But what reminded me here was an article um, let me find it do, 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 do. everything is borrowed on page 32 
go here. There's a word, and if one of you would look up the definition of this word um, and, and post it if you can. There's a word called P, -A P as in Paul, A-S, T as in Tom, I-C-H-E. It's from the Italian word pasticcio, a type of pie with a filling of mixed ingredients. And what they're talking about is taking artwork that somebody else has done, which reminds me of this entire magazine, and mixing it up and creating a new piece. And that would be fun. And Dee Dee is always talking about, in her collage work, creating, creating your own worlds. And I might do that with reverse collage in this magazine. Everything is borrowed. Many beloved novels, songs, and movies are pastiches. I, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that word correctly. It's P-A-S-T-I-C-H-E-S. Pastiches. Becky, here, Becky posted, it's an artistic work in a style that imitates that of another work, artist, or period. The operetta is a pastiche of 18th century styles. Oh, that's cool. Thank you, Becky. So, that would be fun. And they 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 give you some hints of how you can apply what you're reading here and their creativity. How to explore pastiche. Firstly, think about creative works you find fascinating or that you love. Well, here we go, right here. <laughs> American Art, the American Art Review. So we got that done. They don't have to be in the same medium in which you create. Take inspiration from the late filmmaker Derek Jarman, whose 1986 bioptic huh, Carvigio pastiche the Renaissance artist's visual style in the director's telling of the story, thus creating a whole Caravicchio-like universe, and I'm sure I'm butchering that word. You might consider an artist's, uh, oh, I can't even pronounce that word, or one work in particular. I think this word is O-E-U-V-R-E. -E. I'm sure it means the artist's entire style, or work in one particular. You might decide to pastiche an art movement, storytelling genre, or musical style. And so they give several, I, I'm just going to read those two. They give several ways that, if you see this magazine on your grocery store or on your, you know, I get it at the grocery store where they sell their magazines up at the front. It, it's a fairly expensive magazine. It's $15. So I only buy the ones I really like. But this one, if you see the one on creativity, I would recommend getting it. Here they're talking about a family, uh, a family photograph album. And your uh, old recipe cards. There's an article on old recipe cards. Here's one on macrame. Here's one on your own handwriting. You are what you write. And then they talk about the slant, the size, the pressure, personal pronoun, the baselines of your writing. They have one on poetry, paradox, how to create a manis manifestation board. And they're talking about vision boards, but they're converting it into a manifest board. Um, it says, have you ever made a vision board? sometimes known as dream boards, are a relatively common concept. What if you took the project even further, pledging good deeds and charitable actions? So you create a, a vision board sort of thing, and then you put things up there that you want to do. Uh, like they said, charitable deeds, good deeds, Investing positive energy as you work toward your dreams. That's where a manifestation board comes into concept. And I'm sure there's more to it than just that. But 
uh, then they talk about children's books. And I have to say, I have to say, I was trying to think about the children's books that my mother read. I remember one about a little donkey, but I don't remember the title. I'm sitting there trying to remember the children's books that I read or that my mother read to us. She read to us from the presidential series. Um, they were talking about, you know, a children's series of the presidents. Um, then my aunt, when I was a young girl, gave me a little book called Little Sally Mandy. And I'm sure that book is out there. I've got two copies of it. It's in Wisconsin. They're both in Wisconsin. Let me see if I can find Little Sally Mandy. Little Sally Mandy. Oh. L-I-T-T-L-E. And that was one of my favorite books. Little Sally Mandy book. Search. Oh yeah, it's out there. Now, mine is a little red book, so... Yeah. Little Sally Mandy was written by Helen R. Vanderveer. Illustrations by Bess Go Willis, 1924 and 35 editions. Well, I got mine in later, but mine looked like, let's see, yes. Can I get the link here? I'm sure this is a share new copy let's see if I can put the link to this is just the, li the link to the cover of the book there we go I hope that comes, that's this images app. I hope that link works for you guys. I guess you can open it in your browser. Hi, Sherry, Janet. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Barbara Chicken Pot Pie Society. Hi, Suze. Oh, I'm buffering again. Is anybody else buffering? I buffer off and on. Let me know if you all buffer and I lose my connection here. Becky says she has her books from her childhood. I still have the little Sally Mandy books. Um, then there were all the little golden books. I don't remember which one. I don't think I had a favorite other than Little Sally Mandy. But if you see this Breathe magazine, this is well worth it, the creativity issue. I only buy it when I'm inspired. <laughs> I think the last one I bought was January. They had a weekly planner in it that I never used. So I think I'm going to do reverse collage in this and do some pastiche of some of these. So, this is something to work on. Thank you very much, Lori Pink Girly. I'll have to message her and thank her. So, we are back to actually working on some art. Oh, and I'm buffering again here. I'm going to close out my YouTube app on my tablet and see if... See if that helps if I restart it. Do, 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 do. Hi, Riri. Pastash, pastiche. Is that how you pronounce it? Pas, pastiche, pastiche. Thank you, Aunt Beck. Pastiche. Well, let's work on. Since Becky's in here, let's work on this and this. And I'm going to make lightning with my whiteout pen, I think. And I have these little, I'm going to do film strip here. 
And I guess we can do it this way. I hear noises. I hear noises outside. We get kids playing. All right. Janet said it's hot, hot, hot in her state. Janet Mom. And uh, I have the fan going, and that seems to be all I need for tonight. But it'll probably get warm this weekend. We've had some cool days, so I cannot complain. I want to even these out. I'm going to put these in a film strip. Uh, Janet Baum did a film strip on her page, and she was showing it, and I'm going, well, that was, looks pretty easy. I was wondering how I could do a film strip without the die cut. So, and I am going to cut each... Maybe I'll put tape on it before I cut it and cut through the tape. That might be easier than trying to tape each one. So there. And it doesn't have to be right out to the edge. So, and these may not be exactly the same size, but that's okay, too. There, you guys can see what I'm doing. So, Becky does, and Becky, you're free to put in the links. Becky does a, a summertime, she's doing a summertime art journal challenge. And you, you can use a food product cardboards. I'm using the back of the double-sided tape packaging. And uh, it's the theme is summertime. And it's going to go every on Wednesdays at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Becky Antbeck's channel. And then she does an evening opens up an evening room in Fibsville on Wednesday evenings. Now, these these film strips will not be all the same size because the little sewing machines are different sizes and I don't think that I have enough room to... And I'll zoom in when I get to putting them down. Let's cut this side off first. And when I zoom in, you can, you'll be able to see these little sewing machines. They're cute little sewing machine doodles. They'd make a nice page border. And I got them out of that Quilters magazine, that County Register magazine. All right. So let me zoom in so you guys can see. Yeah, I need a ruler. Let's do this. Yeah. This way. And it isn't going to matter so much. Let's see, this is the bottom of the previous page, and my journal's going to flip open this way. So I want this one this way. Maybe I'll do June lightning bugs on my, or July lightning bugs on my, um, three, my ATC. 
All right, let me zoom in so you guys can see a little better. You'll be way zoomed in, but you'll be able to see it a lot better. So I have one, two, I have some of them are wider than the other, so I'm going to have to figure out the widest one. I have five of them. I thought I had six of them. I guess there's only five. All right, so let's bring them down. And I can leave a fair amount of space because I'm going to draw little squares, white, little white squares. Like that. I guess this means I'll have to, let me zoom out again so you guys could see them in, in the pieces, but you can't see the whole piece. I get it. Hold on phone. It's hard when you you're zooming with your pinching. There we go. That's about as good as it's gonna get. Alright. So this is gonna be page two of the page from last Wednesday. sure I have my sewing machine the right way and let's put it right and they may be a little off one's a little I think it out put yeah. trim this if I can hold it still where did it go it's over on this side It's tiny. I don't do good with miniature stuff. I have to tell you, my I feel like my hands are so big and clumsy. This one's sideways. <laughs> mm. So we had leftover pizza tonight. And I put it in at the wrong time because my brother likes to watch his Wheel of Fortune. And the pizza was done. And I said, well, we'll just turn the oven off and leave it in there until you watch your show. Well, it continued to cook. So it was a little bit cooked. <laughs> it was still edible, but we don't usually eat it that I left that. Well, I guess it'll be like that. It wasn't as good as it usually is. We had cooked pizza, leftover pizza. We had pizza last night. I was tired from getting home last night. A little bit down. So I'm going to I'm going to have to really cut down on my sugars and my my starches. My chips. You know, and I like vegetables. I like vegetables. So, I'm, you know, I don't mind changing my diet that way. But I also like sweets. And, 
you know, the dentist was pretty severe. He said, you need a, no sweets between meals. And I'm going, none? <laughs> I had planned to uh, buy some cream and make some ice cream, refrigerator ice cream. I was so down after I got out of the dentist that I just came home. Well, my brother wanted milk. I went to the grocery store and got milk. And then I got a little rebellious. And I said, well, if I can't have sweets, I'm going to buy some potato chips. And so I bought some ruffles. And then I was I kind of reading up on dentistry on the Internet. And, uh, the, boy, it's interesting reading all the things people go through. And uh, <laughs> I read it. Chips are bad for you, too. I'm going, oh, no, chips are bad, too. These are those whiteout pens. Now, what I do like about these, these aren't as bright white as um, these are Faber-Castell pit pens. They aren't as bright white as my, um, my whiteout, my big whiteout. But my big white out, if I make a line and move my ruler, it will blur. So we're going to we're going to use the white out, and these will make a nicer. And let's let's practice a little on here. Some little squares. See, they're just not to me. They're not as they're not as bright. Find a different maybe uh do I need to shake these up a little and they just to me they aren't a bright white like I'm expecting I'll go with that. Hi, Mary Lou, Auntie Loopy. And she says, Mary, eat what you want. We live just once. Yeah, but if all my teeth fall out. See, uh, what happened was I went to the dentist thinking I just have three cavities. And I walked out there with a whole different perspective. <laughs> oh. All right. So let's put some. Um, and a little bit annoyed because I'm going to get a second opinion. I, I've i never gone to this dentist before. And I don't know, I just didn't get a good feeling from even in a shot because while I was there filling out my information, another lady about my age come in. And she was not happy. I smiled at her and said hello and you know, she just kind of, she wasn't, you could tell she had a lot on her mind. And, uh, I, I don't know. I just did not get a good feeling. And when I paid my bill, when I left, you know, I expected, I expected at least a little more courteous treatment. I didn't. You know, and you have to understand that it's an office. And people get busy and, uh, you know, you have to give them some, you have to give them some leeway. But uh, I felt like I could have been treated a little bit nicer, a little bit more polite. And, you know, after all, I'm the one giving them all my money. <laughs> I don't know. I just wasn't. I just walked out of there very uncomfortable, let's put it that way. And he wants to pull, he wants to pull the tooth that I think can be either a crown or a bond, and he said, well, if I put a crown or a bond on it, it'll just fall off. And I'm sitting there, well, if you pull the tooth, I'm not going to have it anyway. <laughs> so what if it falls off? We don't know if it will fall off. You know, there's a chance of it falling off. But if you pull the tooth, I won't have the tooth anyway. And he says, well, you know, he's thinking you'll just be back for the same work again. 
But I don't know. I think I'd, I'd rather take that chance. So I'm going to get a second opinion from another doctor. I, you know, it's really kind of my fault because since I've been here at home, I haven't been taking care of my teeth like I should. And so that part, you know, I'm, I'm guilty there. And I'm going to change my ways, but... Like after supper tonight, I brushed my teeth. I've been brushing my teeth ever since I got home. <laughs> uh, so that's the story with my... It really did get me down, though. You know, it just kind of got me down, discouraged, because I don't want dentures. I don't want partials. I can't afford implants. Geez, those implants can run you 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, not 50. Several implants can cost you a lot of money. And I'm not sure that's the way I want to go. I don't know. How is this? Let's just draw a line down this way. Rhonda says, good idea about the second. Yeah, I've been reading, and even the dental association says any good dentist will not hold it against you if you get a second opinion. And I don't know if you guys, some of you who have faced this before, probably know what an endodontist is endodontist they're a little bit more experienced at crowns and root canals and stuff like that so I think I'm going to go to an endodontist if I can there is one locally here if I can get an appointment I couldn't call today they were closed all right what do I want to do here just some marks I think So that kind of, it kind of got me down. I, you know, I have to be honest about it. But, well, I don't have to be honest about it, but I'm just not sure that I want to go through being toothless. <laughs> he said, you could just have them all pulled and not do anything. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, yeah, that'd make me a real little granny, wouldn't it? And I was thinking about that lady who came in, who was, you know, who I smiled at and, you know, said hello to and everything. And she, she just basically kind of ignored me. And she probably is going through the same thing. And she's probably got a lot on her heart and mind and is worried and, you know, I was thinking about her. Uh oh, this some of this isn't going to fit, but that's okay. So, I don't know. I'm just, I don't have that kind of money to, to pour into that stuff. And the thing of it is, my teeth don't hurt. Even the, what I went there for doesn't hurt. I don't have any pain. He said, you will. <laughs> and he says, if it abscessed, it can cause heart disease. And I'm sitting there going, well, I don't know. Get ready to die, I guess. This isn't the best film strip in the world, but it gives you an idea. Cheryl says she has to get another crown. Crowns are fine. Yeah. I have some crowns, and he wants to take the crowns out of my mouth altogether and pull those teeth. 
and you know he kept reading off I you know I went there thinking three fillings and he kept reading off teeth to be pulled and he kept reading them, and I, I said am I gonna have any teeth left you know? <laughs> they didn't say anything you know uh, I you know when you're not in pain when you're not expecting any pain to pull those teeth just doesn't seem, you know, who knows how, you know, I may never feel pain. He pounded on one of my teeth where I had had a crown before. And he pounded on it and he says, you don't feel anything? And I said, no, I don't feel anything. So you, for all I know, the nerves may be dead in there. All right, so I'm going to... I think I'm going to put lightning bugs on here and we're going to put some lightning strikes down in here. And I think I'll paint this a uh, background a dark navy blue. I think it'll still show. And lightning bugs aren't going to show up too well on there, but let's I guess those white show up pretty good, but I'm just, they're not as bright white as my, which I'm going to use now, my whiteout pen. I like these big whiteout pens. They do have, they do have a, a little bit of an odor if you're sensitive to odors. Not too bad though. All right, lightning strike. Let's make it. I don't know. <laughs> you know, a lightning strike. Something like that. That represents lightning strikes. That's good. And some of this is going to be covered up anyway, so... Put this right in here. Let's make this a little more jagged. <laughs> Lightning doesn't stick around for long enough for me to sketch it. So this will go right in here. Maybe right up in there. The lights went out. Um. Now, I think Ann Lahr suggested I do a film strip with little lightnings, but I think I'm just going to use this film, and I think I'm going to do June bugs, or lightning bugs in here. So let's paint this a navy blue. Uh, what do I have here? I have English navy. I want it a little bit lighter, though. Let's add some... Shall I add some purple to it? No, let's add some. Let's add some blue to it, if I can get to some blue. There we go, let's add a little bit of blue. Oh, that's green. It looked blue from here. Here. This is aqua, but this will be okay. Put that down in my bucket. Put this away. Put my scissors away. And I didn't get my towels out, so I don't know where they are. Hold the phone, let me find my towels. Oh, you need a quote. I need a quote on there, too.
dab of lighter blue and some dark blue. Let's just paint this out. Something to hold this. I don't want this too dark because if it's too dark, it won't show up against that black. about put my brush in my teeth and let's see heat gun alert Riri says she knows somebody who just paid forty thousand dollars wow see and I don't know um I like the idea of implants but I don't understand why they're charging so much. Uh, I could understand paying two or three thousand dollars, but they go into eight, nine, ten thousand dollars a tooth. And I, I guess it's an elective. And he wants to pull my wisdom tooth. And I've had dentists before tell me to leave that wisdom tooth there, unless it bothered me. And so that makes me suspicious that he's just doing it for the business, and I hate to say that about him, because he seemed like a nice guy, but, you know, they have to make a living too, and you do have to be. So I came home rather down. But after I, I did a lot of reading up on it last night. Um, one reason I was up so late. <laughs> and uh, there are a lot of people. And I'm surprised I haven't found a group. Uh, the people who are experiencing, maybe there's one out there on one of the services. But you would think there would be a group of people that are experiencing uh pain, dental problems that would get together and discuss things like a, like a cancer group. And speaking of cancer, as I was driving home, I said, well, at least it's not cancer. You have to be a millionaire, Lisa says, to get decent implants. Yeah. Hi, Lizzie Brewer. Barbara says, I wash my teeth with Tom's toothpaste and use a real good mouthwash. Yeah. Yeah, Riri says, the staff makes the practice. You have the right to get a second opinion. Yeah, I wasn't too happy with the, the friendliness of the staff. And I was thinking about it, and I'm going, well, maybe they're just having a bad day in the office. You know, you, but you get that first impression, and, and you don't walk away too happy. This doesn't look like lightning at all. <laughs> I feel like painting that out. I'm not happy with my lightning strikes. It looks like a mess. Let's just paint it out. And... You don't like it, you can always paint it out. What 
Picasso painted over a lot of his canvases. I was reading about Picasso. I guess he needed the he needed the canvas, and if he didn't like something, he painted over them, washed them out, lost a lot of his probably a lot of his good work. I need my dictionary out here. Let me smear this paint in my dictionary. Smeared on there. Don't want to waste my paint. Put that to the side. Lizzie's here. Mary Lou is here. Cheryl and Barbara. That blows my mind. Forty thousand dollars. You don't want it to get to the hurting point. Yeah, I I want it. That's why I'm gonna go see a get a second opinion, cause. I don't think those cavities are, are deep enough, because I can see them. One of them's small, and, uh, you know, I hate to say it, I get the feeling that he's taking the easy way out and just getting rid of the tooth. And I think if I go, I'm just going to get a second opinion. If the other doctor says the same thing, I might reconsider it, but... I was sitting there going, there goes my... I wanted a new laptop, but there there goes my money for my laptop. <laughs> oh dear. And I, I told my brother that and he said, Well you can't eat your laptop. It's a little depressing when you stop to think about it. If we're gonna have teeth, why can't we have enamel that you know can they say your tooth enamel cannot regrow. The enamel on your teeth does not regrow. And I cannot, if you have your teeth pulled, the whole face of your shape, pull, the shape of your face changes. And I'm just not ready to, you know, I never liked my face, but I'm not ready to have it all caved in. <laughs> All my crowns have root canals. That kills the nerve. Yeah, I'm thinking, Suze, that he was banging on a tooth that killed the... Because I've had some root canals. Family member had an abscess and would not go to the dentist and had a heart attack and died. Oh, I'm so sorry, Cheryl. Thank you, Janet. She said, I appreciate the thumbs up. I appreciate that, Janet. Well, I do, I do floss my teeth, but I need to be a little bit more diligent. So I'm, I am, I've been duly lectured to <laughs> by the dentist. I, I knew when I went in there that I was, he was going to give me a talking to. And it's hard to cut out your sugar. It's, it's hard, and even, especially when you're addicted to it. But I came home, I had some M&M's sitting in a package that, you know, I like to eat a few here and there. And I threw them in the wastebasket. I threw out all my M&M's. <laughs> and I like those Nips coffee candies, those little Nips. And I guess I'm going to have to throw those out, too, because those are hard candies. And I like, I like those, but... You know, you holding them in your mouth, you're just holding on to sugar. So I guess they're going to get tossed. Usually the reason they pull in wisdom teeth is they become impacted. Yeah. But... I don't know. I've had dentists still. I've in the past. I haven't been to a dentist for a long time, but when I did go, it, you know, and the dentist would see that wisdom tooth, it never came through, and they were telling me just to leave it alone unless it really started.
causing an issue, causing a problem. And for years, for years that, and it's still now, I don't have any problem with feeling pain in any of my teeth. Jill says, hi, Janet. Thank you. Oh, Jill says she's not feeling good right now. Could use the company. Welcome, Jill. We're glad you stopped by. Jill says she had a really busy and good week this week. But her anxiety is pretty high. Well, Jill, we're, you're among friends here, so... Yep, I'm going to go get another opinion, Cheryl. Let's see, Jill, it's good to have you here. Sit back and relax with us, Janet says. Jill says she has a movie on in the background, but I'm just not liking to be alone right now. Well, you're not alone. You're not alone. You're with us. That's one reason why I like these live streams. You know, they aren't perfect. The live streams aren't perfect, but at least we can chat with each other. Yeah, I was wondering that too. Like if you eat a piece of candy, enjoy it, and you know, enjoy it while you have it, and then run in and brush your teeth. <laughs> Just brush your teeth after, yeah. Anne said it's not the sugar, Mary. Let's see what Anne is saying. Anne says it's not the sugar. You need a second opinion. We're all here, Jill. I'm just reading through chat. Jill says, Grandma and I used to eat nips. They were good, and they also had licorice. I haven't had the licorice ones. Cheryl said, yeah, licorice, licorice can send your blood pressure up, too. But I do like my licorice every now and then. I like the red Twizzler list licorice. Let's do these lightning bugs. Anybody got a quote on lightning bugs? A summer quote on lightning bugs? Rhonda says, Jill, you missed the story about me not turning off the water pick and it went right up my nose. <laughs> I missed that too. Oh, well, that's funny. I'm not sure what lightning bugs look like because all you see is their little light. I need some yellow paint. Yellow paint. I have golden sunset. I thought I need a bright yellow, though. I thought I had a bright yellow. Here, King's Gold. I think that's a little brighter. Let's try that. Sherry said she had a calcium deficiency. There was no saving her teeth. Oh, Sherry. Blow, little blow, worm, glimmer, glimmer. Blow, little blow, worm. You got me singing it, Rachel. You got me singing it. Do, 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 do. All right, hold on. I want to... Yeah. Back, 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 back. I guess you could call them fireflies, too. Lightning bugs in Nebraska. Ooh. I want one at night, though. Let's go to the images. I don't see any dark ones. I just see... Little... I want some at night. Here we go. Oh, they kind of have a glow around them. So let's... I'll probably put yellow with this blue and they'll turn green. 
green bugs. I did take all those pins off the right side of my desk and put them in this candy. Candy! Mary, you shouldn't be showing that. <laughs> well, I didn't eat the whole bucket of it once. Those peppermint candies. Yep, I had peppermint candies. And maybe on his tail. A little. Oh, I see it comes out a little like that. Fireflies. Do you call it a lightning bug or a firefly? And then there's some little, just make little dots in here. Should put them in a jar, but we're going to let them run free. Should put them in a jar. We used to catch them as kids. I don't catch them anymore. I watch them. Let's put one up in here. my page sticky. There's nothing on the back, thank goodness. Sticking to that blue. And let's put one more down in here. give it a second coat because it's kind of transparent stuff. This is that, oh well, this is apple barrels, a little bit more opaque than the deco art, but a little transparent. that a little dry.
their head is almost like a little half circle. That one's a little big. Oh, they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfect. They're really kind of striped. Their back is striped. I don't know if I can do that on here. You don't see much of them in the in the dark. And let's get one of those white. I know what they are, that's all that matters. Let's put some more dots up in here. This Biggie Faber Castell, I got it. I got it in Wisconsin at the Wisconsin Hobby Lobby. And I've had it for years and years and it just keeps going. It just keeps going. Well, we need to work on our murder mystery tonight. Oops, that one's got a little thick there. Let's make the bottom one thicker. So we were talking about the Nettie and Ann and was it Violet? Myself, we're talking about the murder mystery in, a, in Becky's room. And we were talking about maybe his deadbeat brother. And maybe the deadbeat brother was after Johnny's, after Destiny, who's Destiny and Johnny, if you remember. Johnny was the motorcycle man and Destiny was one of our characters. And they were engaged before COVID. Let's go back out here and see what's going on. Lizzie said, it's almost 10 p.m. here. And I'm tired. I'm going to have to call it a night. Good night, Lizzie. Thanks for stopping in. Jill said, I'm watching the Transformers Dark Side of the Moon. 
And after that is Transformers Revenge of something or other. I couldn't see the whole title on the TV guide. Sleep well, Lizzie. Jill said, I'll be here as long as I can. Angie, hi Angie. I didn't see you come in. Lizzie, I need to do some cleaning. I have happy mail everywhere. <laughs> oh, Angie, you make me giggle. Angie says, I wish I all that you go could see this mess on my floor. Don't show it to them, Angie. Fireflies or summer's lan lanterns. Aw. Becky said, I just got something to remember you by, by Gene Wilder. What are you guys talking about? Firefly, firefly, what's your wish? See their wings go swish, swish, swish. I like that. I like that. Firefly, firefly, what's your wish? See their wings go swish, swish, swish. I'm going to use that. Who said that? Lightning bugs light the darkness away. They make you smile before they fly away. That's good, too. I'm going to... I'll use them both, but... Uh, I'm going to use Jill's first, and then I'll write Cheryl's down, maybe in the little... I do have that little book of poetry, which is mostly Cheryl's. Is Marjorie in here? Hi, Marjorie! Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince was such a joy, and now I'm listening to Ready Player One. Jill listens to them all the time when I'm down. I can't recommend them enough. Marjorie says... Hello, 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 Mary and all you wonderful fibs. Oh, Becky said this is giving her an idea for next Wednesday. All right. Rhonda says, oh, Jill, she has the same character in most of her books. Who are you listening to? Bridget Jones? Janet Evanovich? wrote Bridges Diary. Summer with flashing lanterns flying by. Ah, I like all of them. But let's go back to the swish, swish, swish. I like that, Jill's. Ah, uh, where is it? Do, 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 do. Jill says, part of my floor is covered with coloring books and done pictures. Firefly, firefly, make a wish. What was that? I lost it. <laughs> Allie K said, did my comment about beetles go through? I didn't see it, Allie. Janet didn't see it either, Janice. Hi, Janice Glines. Welcome, welcome. I see your question, Allie, but I didn't see the comment about beetles. Was it a long one? I'm looking for Jill's swish, swish, swish. Firefly, firefly, what's your wish? All right, that's what we're going to do, what we're going to do here. Now, let's see. I'll be, I'm going to have to start this down a little. Firefly, fly, firefly, what's your wish? Oops. Must have got some water on this.
this going to fit? Because I'm going to be poking holes up here. I'm going to put it here. There. And let's edge this. Actually, I'm going to put a little white dot. A little brighter white. And let's put let's put little white dots around this. So this is the third week that Becky's done this. I'm really enjoying Becky's summertime. You know what I really like about it though? Is that we're kind of working on her journal as a group. And I really do like that. It's kind of a group project. I'm gonna have to put that right down to the bottom of the page, but it fits. And this up here will be bound. And I don't think I painted. Did I paint the back of these? Let me put this back. Did I paint the back of these? Yeah, I guess I did. So I might have to, depending on what we do next week, change that out. But let's go ahead and put some tape on here. We want to work on our our murder mystery tonight, so I don't want to dilly dally too much. like that. It's kind of down, but this will be, let's get out my, see this will be like this. This is my page here. Like that. Well, you can't see it. It, it, uh, it's bound at the top. Where's the rest of it here? It's here. It's here. This one goes, let me zoom out so you guys can see. So this one, this was week two. A perfect summer day and I got my Pasta's blooming, my fairy gowns. And then this one was the 4th of July. Here. 4th of July. And I got these images that I really like that might go on the cover. She's a little big. But if I make a if I make a wrap around, we'll see. I'd like to use all of her. I might be able to shorten her up. Well no. I might be able to shorten her a little. I'd have to shorten her about an inch. I'm not sure I want to do that. I might just use her on something else. I like this image. Let's put it back here. So, this is page one. Week one was all about the 4th of July. Oh, you know, and I have this. I have this. I'm almost tempted to put that there. 
and I'll take this off. We haven't done the cover yet. I think Becky was going to use the front here for the cover. I shortened her in here. Put the drum behind her. What I would do is, is her arm, I tr trim her arm out and, and as I shorten this, I would move this up so her arm would end up down here. This would be trimmed out here. And then I'd take off some in here. So that I could get her on here. And then put this over here. Put the drum behind her. I don't mind the drum being behind her. And put this a ribbon that I got from Judy P on here. Except the ribbon should probably go it should probably go this way. The ribbon should probably go like that. I kind of like that. All right, we'll we'll think about that. And what I was saying here this back on here. I want to keep this together. If I don't keep it together, I'll lose it. Let's see what I'm doing. So this opens this way. A perfect summer day is two. And then this is three. Porch sitting. But what I want to do here is draw a caricature of me in here. Maybe I'll do it on paper. I'll do that another time. I'll do it on paper and collage it down. I'm going to make myself sitting out on the front porch. We're done with this for now. Let's move on. I wanted to do a Rolodex tonight. That won't take too long. And I'm thinking I'm going to use this card from Judy. Her name is Judy. I guess it's okay to show that. And let's, let's fussy cut these out. I think I'll do that. Yep, I'm going to, I'm going to cut them out and put them in my Rolodex. Where's my little black scissors? put these markers in that bucket so I don't lose them. Let's do a Rolodex card. Look at, I did this. Where did I get this? I got this in Happy Mail, this little, oh, that came from, uh, oh, I can't remember her name, Colo. Her last name is Colo. She lives in Indiana. I bought it at some Happy Mail from auction haul from her and she sent this little kid in the wash with the washing the little dog and it sticks out a little but that's okay they're meant to stick out so these kids are going to be sticking out so I'm just going to yeah I'm going to kind of destroy this card let's let's tape let's tape this together right in. Oh, let's use this. Right in here so that when I fussy cut it I'll have two layers. Maybe one more. And of course we'll be We'll be cutting off the feet. It's a nice card. I appreciate it, but I'll love it in my, I'll love it in my uh, Rolodex. 
<laughs> do I want to save the Just Kids? I think I do. We'll save that too. That's journaling spot. So let's put a. Where's that at? Right in here. Let's put some tape here. And here. And I'll save her note out and just put her note in my journal. And the black is coming off of my fingers from painting. Alright, so let's just fold that down this way. And that'll give this some strength. I have the... I'm going to make a paper doll. Maybe we'll make a Jack of Spades paper doll. Alright, not tonight. Okay, so we're going to fussy cut this out. And this is a note card. Thank you, Judy. I'm cutting it up. <laughs> I hope she doesn't mind. I don't think she would. If she knows I'm going to use it on the Rolodex. Hopefully she won't mind. But Mary, I chose that part just for you. I'm using it. They're barefoot in the water here, but their feet are going to get cut off anyway. Or maybe I'll leave their feet. We'll see. Now I'm going to take the back of this card. Let's let's cut out the. Destroying my note card. <laughs> I'm gonna take the back of it. I'll save the word. I'll save this. And this will go in my journal. Yep, you send me happy mail. It's not never telling how I might use it. There, this will go in my journal. I won't, I'm not doing that tonight. But now I got this pretty kind of a light colored gingham yellow. And I'm going to put that on the back here. I'm going to do it with a glue stick. Oops, and I pulled out the empty one. I should put that empty one in a special. Shall we do an Aladdin's lamp, Sam? Let's rub the Aladdin's lamp and see what kind of a good wish, good quote we can get out of here. <laughs> I cut up some, I'm going to have to cut up some more and put in here. Let's see what this one says. Is this one I pulled before? No. This is, oh yeah. We, I've already pulled this one. We're going to pull a different one. I should keep them out. Maybe put them in my journal. Let's get one I haven't pulled before. Here we go. Learn to laugh at yourself. And you will never run out of things to laugh about. <laughs> I should put these in my journal. And I'll, I'll keep... I'll empty these and I'll put some more in. I like to rub my Aladdin's lamp. Kind of a fun thing to do. I'm not putting those back in. Those will go in my journal. I was reaching for some more glue stick here. This is Holly's glue stick that she sent me. 
Let's cut this off. A scrap. Let's tear it off. Yeah, and I think I'll glue the... Rolodex card. Get the edges. I never get the edges. All right. Now let's do it up in this corner. So it'll look like that. Now I was thinking that was the back, but I should probably make that the front. And let's see what I can do for the back. Maybe I can fold it over. Oh, it just fits. A little bit of fussiness up at the top, but if I put that down at the bottom, it won't show. So let's trim this off. Or I could just put a strip up here. This would be the back. Let's leave this. Fold this over so I know where the fold is. I'm tempted to leave this whole thing on the front this time and put the Just Kids right there. like that maybe. I kind of like that. Simple card. Alright. So we're not going to cut the feet off of these kids. We're going to let them have their feet. They're waiting in the ocean. Just kids here. Maybe them a little. That's good. So I'm about ready to get out the the mystery story. going to put a piece of washi with the 
figure out what I want to put. How about this floral? Kind of little dainty floral. Let's put a little glue right here. And let's just put a, a little floral strip there. I like that. Very simple. Now I just need to cut a, a square, uh, cut a piece out of the back. This one is cutting into their feet a little here, but it has to if it wants to fit in the Rolodex. leave it just like that. Let's sign it on the back. Let's see. July 16th, I believe. July 16th, 2021. There we go. That didn't take too long, did it? it in the Rolodex. I don't think I'm going to get beyond July in here. I think I'll stop when July, at the end of July, because this is the middle of the month and we're really filling it up. It's getting pretty full. <laughs> That's fun though. It's fun. Let's put my card in there too. Okay. So, the murder mystery. Put this back in here. The murder mystery. Let's get rid of this. It's in my way. Put my scissors away. The murder mystery. Let's see what you guys are seeing in chat. Uh, thank you, Riri. I'm sure that would be appreciated. I'm sure they'd appreciate the donation. I mean to our activity director. Jill said, I was trying to say that I picked a pink flower and then I colored quite a bit of it, but I left the rest pink. 
I'll give it to my mom at the end of the month. It's fun to make your own scratch paper for it. We did it in school. Oil pastels, all colors, then acrylic, paint acrylic over the top of it. All right, it's reconnecting. Let me flip the screen here. You'll see my fingers. Hello, hello. I'm back, I think. Let me get my... Up, back up to the camera. I was just out there reading chat when it went down. Thank you, Janet. Janet says she's back. It went down. It lost its internet connection. I think you guys saw the, the Rolodex card that I made. It went down while I was reading chat. Let me reset my... Let me reset my tablet here. It's I seem to be having a little bit of slow connection issues tonight. It's Friday night. No. There we go. Now let me get caught up with you guys. Put it on live chat. There we are. All right, Jenna says you're back, Mary. Jill said, a big part of me wants to watch what's coming of The Walking Dead, but because the end is near from season seven, but I stopped watching a long time ago. All right. Thank you guys for hanging with me. I finished my Rolodex. Oh, there's one more thing before we do the... I, I wanted to do a little challenge. Let's do a little challenge. And I'm going to try to do this every day, and I'll put it on my community tab and, and a link to it in, uh, I'll put it in uh, Fibsville Friends. Let's go to July 16th. And if you watch Sea Lemon, here's July 16th. If you watch Sea Lemon, she, she does these little calendar doodle things. So, and I won't make them hard. I'll keep them simple. <laughs> let's, let's get a, I suppose this pen will block everything out. Let's do it with this blue. Let's, let's block out the days because, and this is an old calendar, 2000 and, 1718 but I've, I've sketched in some of these I sketched in some of these way back in did I date it 2017 a sketch from a copy of a vintage photo here so I played in this a little but I want to I want to play in these so I'm just going to mark out my days here. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a week. Let's see if I can do a week challenge here. And if it works, I'll keep it up. So, what should I do? Let's see. Sea Lemon. Yeah, thank you, Janet. Sea Lemon does a lot of really good journal binding videos. She does a lot of really cool things. Jill says, I only drink pop like once a week, with the exception of today. All right, I'm going to let you guys tell me. Let's make a list. Let's make a list. I'll let you guys give me a list of seven things to do. I'll let you guys challenge me. And if you want to join the challenge on a little piece of scratch paper or something, give me seven, seven, uh, seven, let's see, this is July 16 through 22, 2021. And I'm just going to say, uh, challenge 
list. Are you guys with me? I need seven things. I'm going to let you guys give me a challenge. Don't make them hard. Well, let's just, here, I'll do a, a teacup, uh, a scissors, uh, a shoe, uh, I'm thinking... Just simple things. A flower. A pocket watch. I like that. A pocket watch. I just need two more. Got the flower. A candy bar. Candy bar and a butterfly. We're going to, Mary, I have this, uh, let me write this down, a butterfly. And you can do this if you want to follow along. This is just a little challenge. This is a calendar I had, a planner calendar. I got it in, I got it. What I liked about it is it's magnetic. Here, let me put this bookmark. I like how it closes. It's magnetic closure here, and I like how it loops here. And it closes. That's why I bought it. was on sale. So, but I, and I started sketching in it a long time ago. I, various pages here where, eh, here. See, I, I worked in March and April. But I, and February, looks like I did some work in February. Some sketching stuff. But I want to fill this up. So the challenge is to do one of these things every day next week and you can follow along if you want or you can watch i'll put it out there uh, i'll put it on my instagram i'll put it on my community tab and i'll put it in uh, fibsville but we're going to start out with a teacup let me go get a teacup a pretty one let me go get a teacup if it'll let me without knocking me off flying do, 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 do. Kind of slow here tonight. We went from fireflies to teacups. Now, let's get an image of it. I'm looking at teacup images. Uh, let's find one I like. Do, 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 do. I don't want a very intricate one. And let's see how this faded through. Not too bad. Not too bad going through. Uh, let's just fold this this way. So, let's draw a teacup. I don't want to spend all night on this. I'm just going to do it fast. Just the fast, fast fun. Fast fun here. Let's do a teacup. I'll pick one out here that I like. You can Google teacups and look at the images. That's what I'm doing. Alright, let's draw... Let's just draw one like this, and make it come down, and down, sort of, and around, and let's give it a saucer, and let's give it a, a handle here. And 
hands on a saucer. I'm going to have to hunt out my super tips. I have Becky's super tips, but I don't have them right here, and I'm not going to go behind me and let's uh, shall I make my teacup a, a yellow base just to go fast here let's do that ooh black I'm painting the fireflies let's make it a yellow teacup Just have fun with it. Doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Masterpiece. Yeah, that's good. Ew. Now let's put some little flowers on it. Maybe little blue flowers. I can see some little blue flowers on there. Maybe a couple little red ones. Yeah, yeah I gotta turn around. Red apple. Where's the blue? Come on, I had that blue out, didn't I? Earlier. Yeah, no, that's the green. I keep pulling that green thinking that it's blue. I got deep midnight blue. We'll do that. work out of the cap. And I put my little brush in there. Let's put some little flowers on here. Does not have to be fancy dancy. Uh, let's put a few in here. Okay. Do a little green and red. I still think they should give us a pull tab. Maybe I should zoom in. I'm I'm working here and not looking at you guys. Let's zoom in a little so you can see what I'm doing. Kind of working right at this green is a little dark, but it's okay. Yeah, 
now let's do a little more up in here. And then let's do the red. Okay, I think that's kind of enough. Now, on the background, let's do a little of the sea breeze. Make it pop out. And that's all. Doesn't have to be fancy dancy, just a little fun. A little fun square. Maybe that's what I'll call these fun squares. Just to play in my journal. Little fun challenges. So there's my teacup. We're just going to leave it just like that. Teacup. Let me get back out of my my browser here and all I did was Google teacups and then I just chose one and kind of used it for inspiration. So now we're going to work on the mystery guy. And that will probably take us through to the end. And we'll finish our story and we might kill him off tonight. Well, it depends. We might kill him off tonight. We'll come back to that another time. So I need a pen. Hopefully this one will, looks pretty good. I might have to get out another one. And I think I'm going to leave that open for a bit. So, what we're doing is we're developing a character in Fibsville, and we're going to write a mystery story, and I'm going to kill him off. <laughs> and then we're going to have to figure out who killed him. We might end up with a murder trial in our town. Alrighty. So, let me read where we were from last night, review, the last time we did this. It wasn't last night, it was a couple weeks ago. <laughs> we're following this mind map that I did for to, to develop characters. I got a female mind map and a male one. And I think we were on, well, we decided he was single. But if we kill him off, he may have, because we, we got children, no. Family, mother and father, we decided they were Mormon. Let's go back to the beginning here. Let's go to the beginning. I think that's where we ended. There's A. C, D, E, B, C, D, E, F. And this was just an extra note. Let me read through this to refresh our, our memories here. So you can kind of get an idea. We decided that our character was, um, we started this on July 2nd. 
is a man and a male, and his age is 35, which made him born on July 4th of 1986. He was born in Chicago, Illinois. He was not adopted, but he was born at home. His name is Joshua Charles Young. Describing his face, he has a long neck. He looks like Tom Selleck. He's skinny, but he's got a long neck. His nose is um, kind of a, a medium straight nose, Romanesque. He's got smooth skin, no blemishes. His skin is tan. He's got dark hair and a large mustache. Uh, he's got a heavy five o'clock shadow. He's got bright white teeth. He must have been to my dentist. <laughs> Uh, uh, he's got blue brown, blue brown hazel eyes. He's got a rectangular shaped head, a kind of oval. So that's his face. And then we went to his body sh shape. He's six foot three. He's got he's he's kind of long and lanky legs, and he's tall and muscular. And has long arms. His personality is very friendly. He's very polite and gregarious. He's a people person. He loves to explore. He loves to travel. He's a great listener and he's witty and humorous. This is where I started falling in love with him. <laughs> His education. Uh, let's see. I don't think we touched too much about his education. Let's see what I put on. Um... Uh, uh, He's, got a, he's a Ph.D. doctorate. Uh, because of his outgoing personality, uh, when he was going to school, he had to work as a bartender to help pay his tuition. He was educated in science and medicine, and now he teaches. He's very inspiring. Oh, his teachers were inspiring. Uh, he had a classmate named Becky. Not referring to our Becky, but his class na name was Becky, who was a study partner. Uh, he was in clubs, drama clubs, and chess club. Uh, he went to a large high school in Chicago, and he and Becky were homecoming high school king and queen. And he had won the National Merit Scholar Award. He lost his uh, job uh, with COVID as a waiter. Let's see. He wears clothes with JC on them. He's got a strong cleft chin and likes to use his own telescope. He's a doctor who goes around giving vaccines. And let's see, I think he wound up in Brigham Young University out in Utah because he bought a he bought a cabin. He went off grid and bought a cabin. That must have been when he lost his job. He likes to travel and uh, he he bought he had an apartment, but he ended up buying a uh, a cabin in the mountains. He went off grid. It's a two bedroom bachelor pad with a veranda. He's got neighbors who are an older couple and. Something single people. I'm not sure. Oh, just a few single people were around. A few distant neighbors. I um, think we had him in Park City, Utah. He's, he, um, I think we had him teaching at Brigham Young University. And when I was thinking later, we had named him Joshua Charles Young before we had put him into the Brigham Young University. So there's kind of, there's some sort of a tie in there. So that's kind of our notes for him now. So let's go back to, we, we had left off with the children. He doesn't have any children. But I'm wondering if maybe he might have an illegitimate child someplace. Oh, we were talking about his family. That's where we left off. So let's go to the family. We're right here on I, family. No children. But I'm going to put, just for my own interest, oh, we got the spiritual part is T. We jumped ahead to T. He was Mormon. 
these out there at Brigham Young University. Let's put this. I got to get my notes situated here. So we are on I, which is family. I'm going to put there's a possibility of, and then I got a dry pen. Let's see if I can get a a juicier pen. I think there might be a possibility in there of an illegitimate child. Let's try this one. Possibly an illegitimate child I'm going to put. So we're on I. Possible illegitimate. Or maybe he's being blamed. I'm going to put blamed for a possible illegitimate child. That might be. And maybe he's denying it. I don't know. This is a pen that the cap doesn't fit too well. So, we're ready for his hobbies. We already said that he likes to travel. So, hobbies. We know he likes to travel and use his telescope. Travel, telescope, and fishing. I think we decided. All right. Let's see, Jill went to a different account. To be frank, I went through a phase where I I thought people were after me on Facebook. Oh, okay. Well, there's nothing wrong with changing your account. Bigfoot hunting. Oh, I like Bigfoot hunting. Do you know we've got a Bigfoot museum locally here? Um, somebody in this area... Bigfoot hunting. I like that. Somebody in this area got into a group of a Bigfoot uh, interest group. And they started a Bigfoot... And they have a, they have a meeting every year. And I read about it in the paper. <laughs> Not around our local area, but it, up where we do our grocery shopping. Anne said he's involved in a paternity suit. Ooh, I like that, Anne. I'm going to put an arrow. Involved, because that'll work in with uh, mystery. In a paternity suit. So, well, I have to figure out who's suing him. Who's the, who's the mama? <laughs> uh, the lady with the kid might want to kill him. Yeah. So possible, possible lady wants to, and this is getting back to our, our murder. We aren't quite with the murder yet, but this is, this is a good, this is a good stopping point. I mean, a good side note, possible lady with kid but why would she want to kill him if she's suing him for paternity maybe she's trying to get some life insurance money I'll just put dollar sign there maybe he's got an insurance policy of some sort that she's maybe they were hooked up and he put her as a beneficiary or something We'll have to keep that as a side note. All right, we're not going to dwell too long. We got we got enough hobbies here: travel, telescope, fishing, Bigfoot hunting. Let's go on to I. We already I was occupation. We already um, determined that he is a doctor. At it, does Brigham Young University have a hospital? And you know all of this. We know he's got a PhD. He's a doctor. And he gives, uh, he's traveling, giving vaccines, traveling, <laughs> knocking at your door, giving vaccine. No, he's traveling to, and that's how he got to Fibsville. He's traveling and giving vaccines. 
And it doesn't always have to be COVID vaccine. You know, he could be giving vaccine for shingles or he could be vaccinating kids or something like that. He's just a vaccine. He's All right. So, and then I'm going to put, that's how he got to Fibsville. How he found Fibsville. Unless we said it was another way and I'm not remembering. So we're just going to leave that as the occupation. There's a lot more. Uh, let's see what K. Let's see what I had for occupation on page 770. Because I made little mind maps here. I I broke them out. Let's see what I had. 67. 68. Occupation. Oh, I named different occupations. Sales, insurance, computer, media, legal, farm, service, educa educator. We'll have to put one in there for doctor, medical. Number eight, we'll put medical. Medical. All right. So I just named different occupations here. This could be a list. But, you know, you could take an occupation like medical and say, you know, is he a doctor, is he an assistant, is he a nurse, you know, you could break all, each one of these out if you were actually, but we're not going to go into all of that here. So, let's move on to the, after occupation was um, pets. Does he own any pets? L. Does he have any pets? He's out in Utah. All right, he's involved in a paternity suit. The lady, the kid might want to kill him. A thimble. I'm not sure what the thimble is. Life insurance after he's proven the dad, the DNA test. Okay, life insurance. Life insurance. Uh, DNA test proved he was the dad. Proved he was... Now, we've established kind of away from this that he is, we have a character called um, Johan, who was this guy who was a computer software guy working as on the AI in England. And he was our motor, in our stories, he turned out being our motorcycle guy who helped Destiny get her car started. And they eventually hooked up. And they are engaged to be married, but they never went through with the marriage because of COVID. We kind of ended it because of the COVID. And, uh, um, but we could, w offline, Anne and Nettie and I were talking and saying, this guy, our mystery guy, our James Charles Young, could be the deadbeat brother. But how, let's see. The last names are different. Maybe he was a twin, a, a brother, a stepbrother. We'll have to, but anyway, we're going to have to connect him up with Johnny, who is Johan, who is engaged to destiny. And you, those of you who follow this know who I'm talking about. But he's his deadbeat brother. I should write that down on, on here. Let's go clear back to A, wherever A is. See, this is how, this is how it all gets. Well, there's F, C, D, E, A. We're going to put deadbeat, deadbeat brother of Johnny. And he might be a half brother or step brother or something like that. We'll have to determine that later. We're just getting rough character notes. And I'll type all these out and put them in Fibsville, I think. I might put them on the community tab. We'll see. All right. Uh, so we are on... We're talking about pets, aren't we? Does he have any pets? Her father wants him dead. Oh. Father wants him dead? No hospital at BYU. All right. 
So if he's got a Ph.D., oh, did he study at BYU then, Ann? I'm trying to remember. It's been two weeks. Let's see. Her father wants him dead. Her father wants him. We're kind of getting ahead of himself, but I like jotting these down because it's developing the story. Somebody said he had a dog. I think you're right. So there was no hospital at BIU. No, you'll see. No hospital. He he got his doctorate there, though. He studied at BYU. So he must be teach. He must be teaching or something. How did he? Um, how is he? He's out in uh, Park City, Utah, but what is his occupation? He's a Ph.D. doctor. Oh, a, there could be a, a hospital in that in Salt Lake City. He could be working at, working at a hospital, a local hospital. <laughs> Has to be a hospital out there. All right. Hi, lovely art. You should check Dee Dee's channel. This prompt list she is working with. Society, Society by Dick Collectors talking to Jill. Let's see. Lovely art says, excuse my ignorance, but is there a video for how that comp book of Society Ideas that Mary is working from? Okay, this... Actually, this was a when Dee Dee was doing her magazine. Dee Dee, I don't know if this is in her Society of Idea Collector playlist. Dee Dee did a magazine art journaling where she glued magazines together. And she cut hers in half. Well, I think she might have a couple of whole ones, too. I didn't cut mine in half. But Dee Dee uh, does reverse collage like she'll... She she has the magazines cut. Uh, I think she used some summer sets that she cut in half horizontally, and then she glued them together. And I glued five magazines together here. And after I glued them together, then I got into working on the pages, and the mind map came from the Society of Idea Collectors. But the magazine itself is I mean the book itself that I'm working in is really one of uh, was inspired by one of Dee Dee's magazine art journals there are 800 pages in these five magazines and I did all of this I did all of the I reverse collage it all. <laughs> it took me ah it took me a good month or so and then I went through and I worked on pages I thought I had Dee Dee do I have Dee Dee in here I thought I had Dee Dee's portrait. Yeah, here's Dee Dee. This is, this is I put, better get crack lacking. And then I put Dee Dee here, a, kind of a caricature of Dee Dee. This magazine idea playground, that's what she calls it, a magazine idea playground journal is dedicated to Dee Dee Willingham. And her reverse collage technique, I'm, I lost it in here. June 25th of 2017, I did this. So this is my dedication page for Dee Dee. <laughs> and then uh, the rest of this is just mostly, I haven't worked on these pages. They're just kind of blank other than I reverse collaged out all these magazine pages. I got a few pages that I worked in. Let's see. Let me find. I thought I did. I did one of Peekaboo Pumpkin. I did doodling on a pumpkin stack there. Uh, this was just a collage work. I did this in June of 2017. I was playing with the fine liner around these images. And let's see, do I, I thought I had some cut work pages. Here was a, this is an alternate mind map. This is a mind map not using the circles, but it's got the who, what, when, where, why, and how. And, and I was mind mapping 
this photograph, which I eventually painted out and collaged and all of this. Greetings from Coney Island. And this kind of just turned into a collage piece of artwork. But I was telling the story of this lady. I'm not sure how well you can see her. Right here, this lady. And so I was developing the story here with this mind map. Who? Um, I called her the Coney Island baby bathing cute, cutie. She's friends. I got a garden bouquet. Friends, Coney Island. She's visiting friends on Coney Island. A Sunday tea luncheon service. Ugly crow birds. So I'm using different... I'm describing different images on this page. I'd have to go through and figure out each one. But I had quite a story going here. I'm not going to go through it all. The images. The images was a central Coney Island uh, building baby. I got three jars of flowers, a yellow quilt square, um, a painted coffee and coffee pot and tray. I got some ugly crow birds. I got some square tiles, a wooden pail, a flower bloom and butterfly, a wooden shelf of figurines. Those were the images that I had collaged down in here. But they kind of got all painted out. Here's the coffee pot and the quilt. I think she went to a tea on Sunday at Coney Island. There's a postcard in here that says Coney Island. And I'm not sure what all the figures are here. They made sense to me at the time. And let's see, what else did I do in here? Do I have anything else in here? I should work in here more. I tell you, after I painted all those pages, I was, <laughs> I was done. Uh, you know, but the, the matte paint does not stick. These pages flip pretty good. They flip pretty good. I thought I had some cut pages in here. Might be another magazine where I cut some pages. Lace pages. Indianapolis. No, I guess not. And then I got involved in doing this mind mapping at the back. That's my... <laughs> So I got uh, uh, every little detail that I have on the mind map here, I'm breaking it out in another mind map over in here. Well, over in wherever they are. <laughs> over in here. All right, so we're on pets. He has a dog. We're just going to leave it like that. That's enough. Uh, the next one is intelligence. What did I have for intelligence on 769? We know he's smart. Let's go to page 769. See, I'm developing a character. Seven, 769. Intelligence. What? I must have really bopped over there. Intelligence. Is he a genius? Is he just smart? Is he good, average, slow, or below average? Those are the intelligence. That's gonna we're gonna put him as a let's make him smart. He's not a genius yet. He may think he is, but he's not. Let me grab these papers. So intelligent, we're just gonna put him as smart. That might work into our story. He might outsmart these guys. All right, then the next one is, let's go back here. Uh, favorites. All right, what are his favorites? I got, what is his favorite movie, book, food, color, song, actor, TV show, actor's hobby, subject, restaurant, city, author, and car. So we don't have to do all of those. Let's go to Anne favorites. What's his 
favorite uh, book and movie or food? What's his favorite food, book and movie? Is there anything else? It'd take us forever to do all of these. We'll do city. We'll do city as uh, Salt Lake City. He likes Salt Lake City because that's where he's at. Yeah. All right, let's see what you guys are saying. I'm losing track. Jill, I tagged you in the address file. I look at my old memories on Facebook, Jill says, from two to three years ago where I'm drawing and reading print stuff like that, and it just makes me sad. Aw, Jill. You know, just accept yourself as, you know, I look back on my past, and, and I, I, you know, there are things in my past that I'm not happy about. But those things are things you went through that make you who you are now. So, just like Becky says, leave it in yesterday. Leave it in yesterday. Don't dwell on them too much. His move, favorite movie is Dancing with Wolves. I like that, Anne. Anne's with it tonight. Dancing with Wolves. Who is the character, the man that played in that? I can see his face. I have trouble remembering names, but I can just close my eyes and see his face. What's his favorite book and food? What does he like to eat? Thank you, Jill. Welcome to Fibsville. Welcome to Fibsville, friends. What does he like to eat? What is his favorite food? I'm, I'm going to let you guys choose. Remember, he's in Fibsville. So let's put a good home... No, I'm, I'm going to pick it myself. He likes good home-cooked meals. Home-cooked meals. That's what he's looking for here. He's looking for some good home-cooked meals. Could be a variety of things. Becky says learning experiences, nothing more. Life moves, yeah. Becky's talking to Jill. She says your past is just learning experiences, nothing more. Life moves forward and in a forward rotation, never backwards. Becky's given some good advice here. Don't let a past memory or event control your happiness now or in the future. It does not belong there. Very good, Becky. Very, I'm glad you said that. So what is his favorite book? I'm not, I'm not good with books. And oh, um, I might come back and fill some of these in. Uh, let's go on to O, uh, which is I'm gonna get this done tonight. I knocked something off, there's a bug flying around here. Social media. Now we know he went off grid, so he went off grid. But maybe he has some old social media. And social media. I'm not sure I filled all of these out. Social media. What service was he? Was he on Facebook, Google, YouTube, Ustream, Twitch, Instagram, email, Yahoo, uh, eBay, Etsy, or Periscope? At the time I had Periscope in there. Uh... How much was he on there? Frequently, never, daily, occasionally. How much was he went off grid? Let's put he was a, on Google because of his half-brother. On He had a Google account, which means he had a YouTube account. Which means, did he have any videos? Did he have a channel? And let's put him on Facebook. He hates social media. 
Yeah, he went off grid. He decided that he, he hated it. I like that. Decided that he hated it. So we could put a question of why did he hate it? This would be a who, what, when, where, why. Rhonda says she's having a brain fart. <laughs> Mina, hi Mina. Oh, Robot by Isaac. You liked Robot by Isaac M. A As I can't pronounce that word. Asma, Asma, I know who you mean. My brother used to read him all the time. Favorite when a child. Are you talking about it was your favorite or his favorite? Let's go back to favorite book. Let's put, uh, was it just I, Robot or just Robot? Isaac As Asmana As Asma. Well, I know who you mean. Welcome, Mina. Riri says, "Really? Shame on me. I read all the books." <laughs> I think. Let's see. His favorite. Okay. Thank you, Mina. I, I robot, I robot. I'm gonna have to go look that up. Okay. Centennial by James Michener. Okay, he's got two favorites here. Centennial by Michener. That one I read by Michener. Never saw the movie. The book was good, Mina says. All right, let's move on. Mina, do you remember, did he have a dog as a pet? Uh, Janice, when we were on pets, Janice said that he had a dog. Do you remember if we said if he had a dog? And did we go any further than that? All right, let's move on from social media. We got that he went off grid. He decided that he hated... Uh, social media. He was on Google, YouTube, and Facebook when he had Google Ma Gmail. All right, let's move on to the next one. We want to get through these. Income. His income level. Uh, well, if he's got his PhD, that doesn't mean that he's uh, income level. income I got is does he make 5 to 12 12 to 25 25 to 50 we're talking about thousands 50,000 to 70 70 to 100 or a hundred greater than a hundred is he rich or is he middle mid income when was his last raise one two three four five years ago uh, his source of income a paycheck, retirement, odd jobs, second jobs, investments. Well, we know that he he's a doctor. Uh, so I imagine his income would have to be greater than 100000 So we're going to put him as greater at 100000 And I don't know if doctors get, get raises. They usually generate their own income. So I'm going to skip the raise thing. The source... The source, I'm going to put uh, salary and investments. Salary plus investments. So we're describing this guy. This has given us an idea of who this person is that we're going to... He's comfortable. Yeah, I would I would say that he's comfortable in 100000 a year. But I don't know. Salt Lake City, maybe you need a little bit higher income than you do in Nebraska. <laughs> All right, after income, that's just a fact. Um, I got style, and by style, I meant, uh, uh, is he neat, sloppy, is he classic, is he hip or modern, is he casual, or retro, is he frumpy? So what's his style? His personal style. Huh? 
How old was he? He was 35, Aunt Loopy. Auntie Loopy. He was born in 1986. He's, we just, we, right at the beginning, we determined he was 35 years old. He was born in 1986 on July 4th in Chicago, Illinois. He was born at home. His parents were Mormon. That's why he ended up in Salt Lake City. I think he was studying out there, and then he became a doctor. Jill says she might try to go to bed. I'm just fight, fighting sleep, but I'll have this on in the background. Okay, Jill, sweet dreams. Well, what well, his personal style? I'm going to put that he was kind of frumpy. Uh, you know, there was that, who was that doctor show? of that guy that was a doctor, he walked around with a cane, he was a real smart genius guy, but he was kind of frumpy. And this is Johnny's deadbeat half-brother, so I think his style is going to be kind of frumpy. Casual, frumpy casual. We'll put, okay. Let's move on, we don't have to dwell too much on this right now, it might mean more later. Uh, his hair, we didn't describe his hair. We need the color, length, texture, is it dyed? He's 35, so has he got brown hair? I think we said he had brown hair, didn't we? QR, hair. Somehow I came back and we we're describing his hair. Did we describe his hair over here? He's got a mustache. He's got dimples. Bright white teeth. I don't think we described his hair. He's got a rectangular oval shaped head. He's got a five o'clock shadow. So he's kind of frumpy, casual. So what color is his hair? Good night, Riri. Have a good evening. Have a great weekend. Are you saying good night to to no? She's off to lurk and to snooze. Messy looking hair, so it's messy. Straight and comb back. <laughs> uh, messy straight and comb back. He could be trying to. Uh, it's messy straight comb back. What color is it? Uh, brown, auburn, black, red, blonde, white, or gray? Is it medium, short, or long? I'm going to put it at its medium. Now, keep in mind that some of this mind map applies to a lady, too. So I got, is it perm, bob, straight, curly, or shagged? These mind maps are, are, are gender neutral. I'm going to put that it's white. Okay. Dark brown turning white. Dark brown turning white. All right. Stop on the, the hair. Turning white. All right. And I think that's the end of my little mind maps. I didn't get them all done, but let's go back to the big one and see what I have here. Uh, after hair, we got spiritual. We decided he was a Mormon, so I'm on T. Let's go get T. C, D, E, F. Here's T. We can skip the spiritual. We just decided he was a Mormon. Let's put this here. I'll write these all up. I'll try to get that done this weekend. All right, after spiritual, what kind of friends does he have? Well, we know he's kind of out in the cabin. He has a elderly couple living next door. But does he have, is, we know he's gregarious. We know he's a per, people person. So what kind of friends does he have? We know he lives out in a, on a cabin off grid. 
Good night, Mary and Mary Lou Auntie Loopy. Does he have a man bun? I don't know, Allie K, does he? <laughs> we'll put a question mark. Man bun. Man bun. Maybe maybe when he's working he ties it up. Man bun. Ties it back, comb back into and pulls it back to when I think of those man buns, I think of colonial men, how they used to wear their hair tied back into like a little ponytail. What did Becky say? Jenna says, what, Becky? Is he Race Bannon from Johnny Quest? <laughs> what did Becky say? White. <laughs> I'm on his friends. What kind of friends does he have? I didn't mind map. I stopped the, my friend's mind map, so I don't have... We just got a few more to do. Man buns are goofy looking. <laughs> I did too, Becky. I, um, except for I didn't really... I don't really have gray hair, and neither do you. Your Your hair is white. I'd rather them braid it or leave it loose if long. Well, let's move on. Uh, friends, uh, traditions, what kind of tradition? Let's just list them. Traditions is one. I might have to come in and fill some of these in myself. Traditions. And then after traditions, we got his age. EFGH, we decided that he was 35. So we got that. Face, body shape, personality. We're back on A. We're back on A here. So just friends and traditions was the last two. On this one, I think I added some more over here. What did I add? Hairstyle, friends, tradition, no age, name. No, I think I got them all. So let's summarize this guy. Let's summarize him. And then maybe we'll think of a story plot here. It's 10.30. I'm going to go off at 11 tonight. I'm not going to stay on too late. It's 10.30 here. So let me read through. Let me put the cap on this pen. Let me read through our character as we developed him. Let me get back to A. Let me organize. A, B, C, D, E, F, where's G? G H I, I skip J L M N O P Q R. I skipped S T U T F G. Oh, G is here. Friends and tradition. Okay. Let me give a synopsis of our character really fast. I kind of already did, but. Yeah, my hair is white. I got, my dad had white hair. My mom's hair was darker when she was younger, so her hair kind of, well, her hair was gray, but it was kind of white too. Both my brothers have really white hair, and I think my sister probably did. We all got white early. <laughs> gray hair, I guess you could say early, like what Aunt Beck says. Okay, our mystery man is age 35. He was born in 1986 on July 4th in Chicago, Illinois. He was born at home. He was not adopted. His name is Joshua Charles Young. He was the deadbeat half-brother of Johnny. So we're going to have to determine that relationship in there later. He is 6 foot 3 inches tall. His face is long. He's got a long neck. He looks like Tom Selleck. He's um, smooth. His face is long and skinny. He's got smooth skin with no blemishes. His nose is medium straight Romanesque. He's got dimples. He's got bright white teeth. Um, he 
He's got a tan skin tone. He's got, oh, here I have, he's got dark hair. We're going to have to cross out dark hair because we decided his hair was white. Um, he's got a large uh, mustache and heavy uh, five o'clock shadow. He's got a rectangular oval shaped head. He's got um, blue ha brown hazel eyes. He's six foot three. He's tall and long and lanky legs. He's muscular and he's got long arms. His personality, he's very friendly, very polite and gregarious people person. He likes to explore and he loves to travel. He's a great listener. He's witty and humorous, but he's still, he's a kind of a deadbeat. That's interesting. Uh, his educate. oh, he likes mysteries. He's a, got a Sherlock Holmes personality. Um, we'll come back to his education. He's single, engaged. Oh. Well, God, he's single, engaged. He likes to travel. He had an apartment... But he, he got rid of it. I guess he lost his job. His, uh, we'll come back to his job. Uh, he went to Brigham Young University in Salt Lake City. He bought a cabin in the mountains and he went off grid. Uh, his cabin is like a two bedroom uh, bachelor pad with a veranda. His neighbors are an older couple with a few single people. And he's kind of outside of Salt Lake City and Park City. That I haven't looked that up yet, but that's what I'm understanding. He's got a few distant neighbors, and Park City is a ski town, they're saying. He's got no children, but there's a possible Ill illegitimate child. He's involved in a paternity suit. Uh, we're, we're thinking that there's some insurance money, and the lady who's the mother of the child, her father wants him dead. Uh, the paternity suit, the, he, her, she's after life insurance money after the DNA prove, DNA test proved that he was the dad. Uh, in his family, his mother and father were Mormons, but they passed away in a plane crash. A plane crashed into their car. Uh, he's got a deadbeat brother, twin brother, and I'm going to put that from twin brother. I'm going to make it a half brother. Because we kind of. Uh, it is uh, Johnny. Our Johnny in Fibsville. He's got one baby sister. No children. But there's a possible illegitimate child. He's got four aunts. And one of them is a doctor. Hobbies. He likes to travel. He's got a telescope. He likes to use his telescope. He likes to fish and he goes Bigfoot hunting. His occupation, we determined that he was a doctor. He's got his PhD. He travels around giving vaccines and that's how he found Fibsville. He's got a pet dog. He's, his intelligence, he's very smart. His favorite food are home cooked meals. His favorite book is I Robot by Isaac Asimov. Am I pronouncing that correctly? And Centennial by Michener. His favorite movie is Dancing with Wolves. And his favorite city is Salt Lake City. Social media, he went off grid. He decided that he didn't like social media. In fact, he hated it. He had a Google account. He was on YouTube and had a Facebook account. Since he was a doctor, his income is greater than 100000 a year, so that makes him very comfortable out in his off-grid cabin. And he makes that by his salary, his doctor salary and investments. His personal style, he's frumpy casual. His hair is messy, straight, combed back, medium, dark brown, turning white, possible man bun. bun. Spiritual is a Mormon. He did a mission in Haiti. Uh, and then we haven't defined his friends or traditions. And we're back to age. So there is our character. How fun that was. Let's go back here. I, this was an odd page. He lost his job to COVID-19. 
so he had to do he took on a waiter job he wears um, clothes with JC on them he's got a strong cliff chin he likes to fish and he owns a telescope uh, this is where because of his outgoing personality he worked in uh, the bar as a waiter he worked as a bartender that's how he paid for his tradition when he, his tuition when he was going to school he studied science and math his teachers were inspiring he had a classmate named Becky who was a study partner and he was in drama club and chess uh, Becky and he were homecoming king and queen in Chicago when they were in high school and he won the National Merit Scholar Award there we go <laughs> so the plot we know he's in Fibsville um, because he's giving vaccines that's what brought him to Fibsville now the thing of it is are we going to find him dead are we going to find him dead or, or is he if he's involved in a paternity suit maybe we found somebody else dead maybe the lady's dead maybe he's being accused of a murder his name is Joshua Charles Young We'd established that in A. Joshua Charles Young is his name. Joshua Charles Young. And he went to Brigham Young University. <laughs> All right, so the plot. The plot of our story. We have two things. Either A, he is murdered. We're going to have, or found dead. We'll say murdered. We don't know if it's murder yet. We'll put found dead. Or B, he's accused of murdering the lady. Accused of murdering. And maybe, maybe how did he murder her? Maybe it was through the vaccine? accused of murder and we're going to put maybe the lady in paternity suit so which one is it going to be am i going to have to ask am i going to have to ask random org jill says i'm still here everybody i can't sleep i just keep laying around and listening to chat well good jill you're listening to our story a or B? Am I going to go ask? Am I have to go ask Random Org? Let's go to Random Org. Let's let Random Org pick. Let's go out to Random Org. I have to get there. My tablet's a little slow. Random. Org. One or two. One or two. One will be A and two will be B. We're going to let, uh, I'm going to let Random Org pick which, what the plot's going to be. Either it's going to be, he's going to be found dead or he's going to be accused of murder. So let's see. I got it here, but it probably won't make a lot of sense to you guys because I'm not going to. So, uh, one or two, let's generate it. And it said two. It's two. So our plot is two. He's going to be accused of murdering the lady in the paternity suit. He might be found dead later. And so how, I'm going to put how, I'm going to put uh, vaccine vaccine overdose, vaccine uh, failure. So they're going to have to prove that he actually plotted to kill her. Somebody's going to have to prove it. So now where are we going to go with this? 
We said we were going to kill him off, but we ended up accusing him of murder. So now what's going to happen to our story? Our mystery story? I suppose we'll have to talk more about the lady. Let me go back out to chat here. Let's see what you guys are telling me. <laughs> we might change. We might defy random and do the other one and kill him off. We'll see. Let me get rid of this. Let me come back out to chat. Did we say he was engaged? Um, I think we did. I think we did. Single slash engaged. So he's, we only know that he's, yeah, single slash engaged. And we only know that because he has a ring on his finger. Has a engagement ring. That's all the only way, or maybe he talked about it. Shall we defy, shall we defy Random Org and, and make him, shall we kill him off instead of accusing him of murder? Random Org says that he's been accused of murder. Jan says, I can kill him. Makes it look like a camping fishing fall in a canyon accident. Then write the whole thing up in the newspaper. Uh... Well, the canyon, he'd have to be found dead in Fibsville, and Fibsville doesn't have a canyon, so, but we could say that he was, he was found dead in a camping. I think we're going to defy Random Org. Let's make him found dead, because I think that's where we, we were going with it. And I think our plot will develop more. Let's go with what Janice said. I would have to kill him off after all the time we spent developing his character. <laughs> That's funny, Han. All right. So he was found. He was found. Uh, he was found. Uh, in a in a at a at a campsite uh, cliff. We're gonna put because he fell. It, 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 we, he, it, uh, he fell off, he, it looks like he might have fallen off of the cliff, but he might have been pushed. And Janice, is a reporter for the paper, is going to write up the, in the Fibsville, in the Daily Fibber. Janice has said she's going to write up, up, write up the, the, the news of his fall in the Daily Fibber. And you don't have to actually do that. In our story, you did. But you don't have to actually do it, Janice, unless you want to. <laughs> Rhonda says, Janice, you're living your alter person. <laughs> Anne said, I'd have to kill him off after all the time we spent. So we're... we're we're going to, this lady is still going to, so maybe, maybe if we get back to the lady in the paternity suit. So let's go, who is the, so who's investigating his murder besides Janice? Who's going to be investigating the murder? Or Officer Herbal investigating, in, invest, investigating murder who's going to be doing it and there's two possibilities here too either his fiance and forgive my spelling or the lady in the paternity suit maybe there's a plot in there or he accidentally fell those are three possibilities of how he was, how he died. And let's just say, for the fun of it, let's say um, the ring that he was wearing, his engagement ring, is missing off of his finger. So either his fiance was mad and took it, 
or the lady in the paternity suit was mad and took it, or when he fell, it fell off of his hand and is somewhere in the weeds <laughs> at the bottom of the cliff. We'll just put it's missing off his hand, his finger. Janice didn't want to get the vaccine, so she killed him. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, we could put that as a possibility. Someone, someone else, this could be, you know, as we're investigating, maybe someone else uh, who didn't want vaccine, want vaccinated. But then, you know, we're, de we're developing a plot, so we've got several things here. Uh, so who finds him? Who finds him? I'm going to have to number the plot. This is plot one, page one, and this is plot page two. Who finds him? We know Officer Orville is investigating it. I don't think we have a judge in Bibbsville. All right. Well, let's do plot two. Who finds him? And how? Did he travel with the fiance or not? Allie Kate asked. Aunt Beck said his fiance killed the lady. Well, that's a possibility, Becky. We got her as a su suspect number one. Janice said she believes in self-preservation. She got the vaccine. <laughs> Did he travel with his fiance? Well, that's a question. Let, let's let's put a list of of questions. Did he travel with his? Did he travel, or did she follow and find out he went to Fibsville and follow him there? This could be part of the plot. We're developing the plot. I haven't. We haven't really decided yet what it's going to be. Uh, did he travel with fiance, or did she follow him? There, and you know, this could be. How did she find out that he was in Fibsville? How did she find... See, there's a how. This is a... Well, this is a question. I'm not sure if that's a what. How did she know where he was? All right. Drowning victim found in Fibsville Lake. Wait a minute. He fell off of a cliff. He was going to kill Janice with a vaccine, but she fought him because she didn't want it, and she ended up giving him the vaccine. Ma'am, he's a goner. <laughs> Somebody poked him with his own needle, but he fell off of a cliff. We established he fell off of a cliff. He was found at a campsite cliff, and he fell. Unless we put some alternatives here. A drowning victim. A drowning victim. Let's make this A, this B, and C, stabbed with a needle. So we got three, three ways that he was possibly killed. He either fell off of a campsite cliff, he was a drowning victim, or he was stabbed with a needle. 
He was either killed by his fiance, a lady in the paternity suit, or he accidentally fell, or somebody who didn't want the vaccine, didn't want to be vaccinated. And we also know that his engagement ring is missing off of his finger. Did he travel with his fiance or did she follow him there? How did she know where he was? All right, let's see what else you guys are saying here. The cat finds him and leads him. <laughs> the cat, oh, uh, bandit. That's a good point. Who finds him? Bandit. Our little kitty, our little black kitty. Bandit is our, our kitty finds him. And and leads now who's he gonna lead officer Orville? I he's not gonna lead me I'm not gonna find him <laughs> who's who's the kitty gonna tell that the cat leads oh it says leads you to him oh no I don't know if I want to go <laughs> Janet says extra extra read all about it man Found with fishing line tangled around his neck in a bizarre accident. Got another way he died here. D. Fishing line. Wrapped around neck. We ne never really tell this story. We're just giving all the possibilities. This is kind of fun, the way that we're developing it. But we should end up with a story. But let's just go with it for now. Our kitty finds him and leads. I'm going to put Officer Orville because I'm not sure I want to go. Officer Orville finds him. The kitty keeps purring at Officer Orville. Yeah, Jenna says we have a lot of suspects. What did Allie K? The cat finds him. Okay. The cat was playing with the fishing line and it got around. The cat? The cat is our kitty. Uh, uh, the cat is our cat a suspect? Is Bandit the the kitty? Bandit is she? Is he a suspect? We can't put Bandit on trial. <laughs> Mina will get upset if you put Bandit as the murderer. <laughs> Mina might step in and whap you ones. And, <laughs> Janet says, the cat walked away licking his paws. <laughs> oh, dear, Rhonda. I can't remember if Becky is... I know Becky was in criminal justice. I can't remember if we made her a prosecutor or not, but we could. We got Officer Orville. Bandit led the Officer Orville to him. We got that much. Bandit is the kitty's name. Bandit. B-A-N-D-I-T. Bandit. Yeah. It's the kitty from ban Bandit. Our little bandit. There are a million cats in Fibsville. <laughs> it seems like it, Janet. We're being overrun by kitties. <sighs> yeah. Janet says, oh no, not our bandit. Our bandit can't be accused of murder. Bandit wouldn't kill him unless he was a bad man. Oh, motive. Motive. Bandit would not kill. Unless he caught him doing in a in a caught him in a crime so what would the crime be if bandit caught him maybe he let's see if he wrapped fishing line around his neck uh what would the crime be what was he doing uh stealing cat food <laughs> theft all right so that's a bandit motive um possible motive um he caught him in a crime and i'm gonna put theft right here although that's not a crime theft and something and uh the murder for the um someone didn't want someone didn't want to be 
someone did not want vaccine. That's the second motive. One, two. Um, the third motive was he accidentally fell, just so it was an accident. It really wasn't a murder, it was an accident. Four was the lady in the paternity suit, and she was after insurance money. Insurance money. That was her motive. She was after money. And the fiance found he was he was in, the fiance found out he was in a paternity suit. He was a father because of the paternity suit. And she killed him. So we've got five we've got five suspects and five motives. Good night, Becky. She says she's got to run. It's nearly midnight. Yes. All right. I'm going to stop, too, because I said I was going to quit at 11. So we've done a lot tonight as far as developing the plot. I'll try to get this all put together and put out on my on my uh, community tab in Fibsville. Maybe just in Fibsville. I don't know if I want to put our story on there yet. We'll see. So, but the purpose of doing this was to develop a, a character. Where's the cap to this pen? Was to develop a character using these mind maps. And we could go through and do the same thing with the, we've got a mystery character in there who did not want to be vaccinated. We've got the fiance and we have the lady in the paternity suit. We could do the same thing with there. We could really carry this story out. I'm not sure how much we want to carry it out. But we're going to have to decide who did it and why. Well, we got the why. We got the motives. But there's more to this story. We'll have to all think about it. So we worked on this tonight. I worked on my... Uh, this will probably be my thumbnail, my pages here. I'll probably make... Where are they? I'll probably make these my thumbnail. And we worked on a... I opened Happy Mail. I got Happy Mail from Judy. And I got Happy Mail from... Um, as an art magazine from... Uh, Paint Girly. Keep everybody in your thoughts and prayers. Let's see what you guys are saying. I'm going to sign off too. I don't want to be on too late. Mina had a good idea. Someone at the studio sees the soggy wallet and tells Officer Orville who checks and finds the body. All right, I like that, Mina. Let's go back to here, how he finds him. Plot one, where's plot two? Who finds them and how? Bandit. Band, we got Bandit. Bandit drags in. Bandit drags in. Uh, the soggy wallet. Thank you, Mina. And Lays it, at, uh, lays it at Officer Orville's feet. And we could go through that wallet. That might be interesting. Who checks and finds a body. Thank you, Mina. Remember, we got a missing engagement ring. We could have somebody trying to hop that off. All right, everybody. I'm going to call it a night. Thank you all for a really fun Friday night. we got a very interesting mystery story going, and we did a summertime page, and we did a arcade.
Mary, and this from Nina. Then Bandit, thinking it's something he's going to play with, takes it to the Atelier studio. Oh, okay, yeah. I kind of got that. Bandit thinks it's something he's going to play with. Takes it to the studio. I got drags in, but thinking it's a toy. Thinking he it is something to play with. All right, I got that. That is a good idea. So Bandit, Bandit drags in the solid, soggy um, wallet, thinking that it's something to play with, and so he comes back to the to the Mary Atelier, and Officer Orville happens to be there. He drops it at Officer Orville's feet, who checks it out, and who goes to investigate. Bina said she doesn't want Bandit framed. <laughs> well, we got Bandit still as a suspect, Mina. We got Bandit as a suspect. That's a, just the, one of the possibilities in there. All right, you guys. Have a really great weekend. Tomorrow's Saturday. Uh, I don't know what's happening tomorrow except for... Beth Schuler comes on in the evening, usually around uh, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Sunday, uh, Tanya usually comes on around, around 1 Central, and I'll be on Sunday evening. Um, I don't know if Attaché Papers is still doing her Sunday morning stream. Mina says, I'm getting the kitty a top lawyer. <laughs> I love it, Mina. I love it. Bandit loves little, I mean, Mina loves little Bandit. Bandit is a focal point of my Fibsville flag, Jenna says. He can't be a murderer. <laughs> it kind of puts a twist in. He can be a suspect. He can be a suspect. That doesn't mean he, he's, being a, he's being held under suspicion. And that just adds a little fun to the story. I love it. I love it. And Mina's going to hire a top-notch lawyer. We're going to have to find a lawyer to defend Bandit. <laughs> oh. All right, you guys. I love it. This was a perfect ending to the night. Have a great weekend, and I will see you Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. Bye. Maybe I can move the body before Officer Orwell finds it. <laughs> you guys are being silly. Good night, everybody. Have a great weekend. I'll see you Sunday night. To the outskirts of town. <laughs> I'm going to sign off. Bye. Mina says hugs and blessings. <laughs>